we get into like the lowdown of parallel and just the fun history that we have together is the last time you were on, we talked about parallel and obviously a lot more has happened where they have the culinary culinary geez, the colony white paper. And now we kind of have the first initial reactions from people. So before we get into that white paper, I'm just curious, what's been your kind of sentiment from somebody that's holding the collection? Obviously people are screaming about conviction. Don't be jumping to these meme coins. We're saying to ourselves, Hey, there's a chance that some of the stuff might actually have a revolution in games, technology, et cetera. And it seems like parallel is doing just that uh yeah so i guess breaking that down from a holder's perspective it's been a long time it's not like parallel has been it's something new and just like shot up like a rocket right we've we've had to put the time in we've had to have a lot of conviction since pack drop one i think that goes back to uh, i'm pretty sure like july or august 2021 so what going on two and a half years from the first pack drop to where we are now is uh pretty insane and by by we i mean i'm not a part of the team so uh, i just mean as a collector uh as somebody who's invested in in assets of parallel but not in the actual team so but it's been pretty nice to see the development of you know at first they were just cards and then we got a couple of comics those will be physicals they aren't yet that's that was never like a main uh goal for them but um, got comics, we got card backs, we got obviously the alpha gameplay, uh, we had a closed beta gameplay, and now we're currently like an open beta, which is pretty neat. Uh, the first expansion is out, but it's not playable in game yet. Probably targeting early Q2 um, is what we've last heard for uh, for Planetfall. So yeah, just just a bunch of things like the the expansiveness of all the collections. There's a, it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's 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 expansive and it lets you dive deep into the lore and have companions in the game, different card backs in the game, card borders, uh, game mats, um, all these different things to express yourself and the personality that like you kind of align with within parallel. But at the same time, because everything is on the blockchain, right? There are probably 15 plus like 15 to 20 different parallel collections so how are you supposed to keep track of that, right? <laughs> that's, that's a lot holy yeah well yep. i mean the other concept with this is i feel that i guess if you're going to put me in like a room and argue with a bunch of people is okay so parallel is just another card game how would you respond to that i don't think or simply put like a, another card game hasn't done it as well as well as these guys have so quickly right so they've uh they've already caught up a lot of ground on those traditional or existing card games while pushing boundaries now are there some stuff to is there some stuff to like refine uh to perfect um you know to to get continuous feedback on and stuff like that surely yeah there there definitely is like that team is always taking in feedback they're executing on it pretty quick on some things. Other things where it's a, a little bit more complex because you have, um, you change, you know, you, you change one thing, then you have to change five things. You change those five things. Now you have to change 10 things. Like it, there's a lot that goes into it, but they are aware of a lot of the community feedback and sentiment. But just to give you an example, like everybody has been crying about the UI and the UX, right, of, of the gameplay and making them to be more easily streamed so that way viewers know what's going on that's a good point yes because whenever i watch your streams i'm like oh, what the hell's going on <laughs> yeah so that's one that they they definitely know and that's one that they've been working on for a while but it's not it's not you know flip a switch versus some other things um that they they've got feedback on uh it gets handled pretty quick but yeah i i'd also just say um one of the cool things that parallel does when in terms of making their ip and all their assets is that when you look at a trading card like a, a parallel trading card it is not just a digital art like 2d um you know digital painting of that card like a like a one-time thing um it's not even just photoshopped it is completely modeled textured um you know put into place uh environment building and then rendered out 
as a 2D image, right? So there's like a virtual camo that will take a picture of that actual environment with the character and the model and that action uh, going on. And the reason I say that is because now they've just leveraged, they're going to be able to leverage those same assets that they've already built out for the cards. They've already thought so far ahead that now they can use those 3D assets and other types of platforms and environments themselves. So whether that be a game in Unreal, whether that be AR, um, whatever your imagination can think of, right? If they have those models and textures all ready to go, that saves them a lot of time. So they've already caught up on the market that way as well. Because most of these card games, they're not building stuff in 3D. Um, those are all just digital art. And then for the cinematics in terms of trailers, right, expansion trailers and, and marketing trailers, that's a one-time thing. They're not they never plan to use those again anywhere across their their platforms. I think you were the only person that I really saw talking about parallel avatars being the alpha. We had the colony white paper that dropped yesterday. I haven't really read it fully, yeah. so I'd love to give or just get kind of get your TLDR on it. But I've also seen how like part of what's going on, and I don't know if that was from the white paper or just an activation, was that you can stake Prime. You'll get this other one. I don't know if it's, it's, I feel like it starts with a P. It's not product, but uh, prompt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Prompt. yeah. And then there's kind of like this system that's really starting to evolve and show us more. I don't know if you're wanting to screen share at all, but uh, T Doge in the chat does say that your lighting looks amazing. Oh, I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So just getting back to your question is basically colony, right? Just a brief breakdown. Yes. Of, yes. Of what yes. that is. Yeah. And then avatars, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So <laughs> colony is, um, it's another game. It's not the TCG. So parallel, there's parallel studios at the top. Then there's Parallel TCG, and then a sister of that is Colony, right? But these assets via, you know, blockchain technology and composability and everything else like that, there can be some, some uh, where, where you can use these assets across both titles. Uh, Parallel TCG is obviously the trading card game, competitive trading card game. Colony is an AI-powered Web3 survival simulation game. Um, and what I mean by that is that you can have these characters, these avatars, their AI agents that continuously learn from not only you as their, you know, master, right, as their partner, but also from the game world and the agents around them. So by doing this and being able to communicate and interact with them via um, text and even voice, it's going to be, uh, you know, speech to text, text to speech type of two-way communication. Uh, they, they continuously learn from the world, and then that's going to just create this immersive dynamic experience for every single player out there because all of your avatars have there is no programming that goes on between them right there are some guidelines there are some some borders some rules some ground rules but you make your avatar whoever you want him or her to be and the relationship between you two decides their entire fate in the game and then plus the relationship that they have within other agents of the game who aren't coded pre pre-programmed at all either so there's not going to be any colony experience any simulation experience that's the exact same like ever uh so that's that's pretty groundbreaking as well i know nvidia is kind of pushing the boundaries there in some uh, in some things that they're testing um i know google just announced something this week that they're also testing in terms of what that means for gaming in terms of um uh, having it be ai powered but parallel is already a step ahead of that plus they've introduced uh, blockchain technology into it meaning that these ai agents avatars whatever you want to call them those are all interchangeable is that they actually own their own wallet and they transact on the blockchain so via the white paper yesterday we we found out that that will be happening via the solana network uh, so these avatars have their own wallets. They're going to mint NFTs themselves. They're going to trade with other avatars, other agents on the actual blockchain, the same blockchain that you and I and Harry Swan use. And to, to try to achieve whatever goal you and your avatar have set. Right. Um, so that's just that's just a new and innovative concept that's just going to take the, the gaming world by by storm. That's uh, 
<laughs> I mean, we, 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 we talk about AI and I, I mentioned this earlier, but it feels like we've not really had that fully hit the blockchain space. People say this token is AI and that's usually the biggest, you know, component of AI. And there's not really that extra kind of fun experience the way that you are describing it. So what's the, what's the reason for somebody picking up a parallel avatar right now? Is it the fact that they get to play within colony and then they get to use it as an avatar within the game or what's the extra perks with it? Well, it's, I don't want to say it's unclear, but there's actually a few questions that we still have for the team. I can tell you, uh, Current avatars, OG avatars that are available on the Ethereum blockchain, those will always be treated as kind of like OGs. And uh, they will be able to breed. Um, they will be able to, you know, create an agent within the colony game for, for a prime fee uh, by owning an actual, you know, NFT avatar. Um, that's the way that you're going to be able to earn prime within the game as well. So prime is is kind of echelon's native token that powers the entire ecosystem uh we haven't mentioned you know the name echelon here i didn't want to make it too complicated you can think of everything under the parallel umbrella but echelon is the foundation you know that kind of hosts that native token prime um parallel the tcg was built using the token you know the prime token and now colony the game the ai game is going to also be using um the, the prime token uh, as well but yeah so avatars an nft avatar will allow you to create mint and trade actual assets via blockchain and uh, hopefully earn some prime and you get to retain those in-game items that you created only if you own an avatar because there will be a free-to-play version that exists within the colony but you will not actually own those things so they will be uh just kind of like renditions or, or I don't even know the word, like uh, just apparitions, right? Parallel TCG also uses that word, apparitions, when that's a term for when something doesn't actually exist like on the blockchain. It's just like it's, it's only off-chain or something that you don't actually own yet. Um, yeah, each, each av I mean, the more avatars that you have, the more colonies that you're going to be able to participate in. So essentially the more agents that you have uh, to be able to you know, just create immersive worlds in, have fun with, uh, try to farm farm prime for you. So it and it's gonna be fun. Like when you spawn into the game, or like when your agent spawns into a colony, you actually get prompted with a, a list of questions. Um, those are still to be set, but that that controls your entire agent's persona and characteristics and like morals and everything else like that. You know that your answers based on those prompts, you know, sets the path for, for their entire life within that world. Now, somebody that's tuning into the stream, I would have the premise that, you know, some of them heard about parallel, but they've definitely heard about the prime token. So what's the point of having prime token? Is it only relevant if you have an avatar to be able to earn off of it? Is it in game experiences? Obviously there's all these card packs and whatnot. So is that the default currency? Uh, yeah. So for, for the parallel ecosystem overall, prime is the token to have. Uh, we have, and by again, we, I'm not part of the team, but like within parallel, you have something called prime sinks to where prime tokens are spent. And then when prime token is spent, obviously some of it goes back to the foundation. Some of it goes to a uh, team. Some of it goes to investors. Some of it goes to uh, the player pool. So the people actually competing in the TCG and winning games. And then part of it also goes to uh, people who have assets cached. So like in parallel, when you have your a full set cached, um, a prime a prime drive cached, uh, which is essentially staked, some of that prime trickles down into into those pockets as well. So prime sinks consist of like cosmetic upgrades that you earn via the battle pass, um, cosmetics in the store that you buy for prime. Um, there's a new prime that came out or prime sink that kind of got announced with the white paper is that you'll be able to stake your prime in order to earn prompt. Uh, now we'll get into that in just a little bit as well. Um, prime is going to take prime to spawn your agent within the colony, right? So they're, they're just trying to make as many ways 
to to spin prime as possible because you know it's it's just a cycle of life for that token but uh to just give you an example of why it's kind of cool and how you can earn prime is when you own the cards that you're playing with within the tcg so when you own that card as an nft uh and the more you own in your 40 card deck the more prime you earn per ranked win so if Currently, just as an example, I think I get anywhere from 0.15 to 0.25 uh, prime per win. So I don't know, that's what, uh, $4 or so, like on average, about $4 per ranked win. Uh, but that's at current prime prices. Um, but there's only 35 million in circulating supply, I believe, and then uh, obviously, as there are more ways to spend Prime, people need more Prime. Uh, to get more Prime, you have to buy more Prime. And then with the upcoming staking for Prompt, uh, that you just guess like, okay, half half the supply or half the owners are, half of them are going to stake their Prime, right? So that's immediately like another 35 to 50% just, just staked. So that, that should chew up some of the supply as well. It's funny how these ecosystems are designing more things that involve tokens after everybody's like, ah, put it all into one. But what do you what do you think about their two token mantra here? Do you think that that's fine? It's good extra incentive or ah, I wish it was just the one prime token. <laughs> uh, I get it. I get it because uh, it's almost as a way to kind of white label things, especially with the new prompt token, because. Wayfinder was another thing that was announced within the white papers. Wayfinder is kind of the the framework of the entire uh, ways that AI agents can communicate with the blockchain, right? So, uh, if your question was about like all the, all the different tokens, so let me just explain to you a little bit about Wayfinder. It's like Wayfinder is a is a, is again it's it's a tool and a framework that helps AI characters um, do things on the blockchain so it's almost like this gps tool this translation tool that's like it it shows them the way and what to do within different blockchain networks so it helps them navigate and make decisions so that way they can interact on chain um so that that that's what wayfinder does and wayfinder their native token is tented tentatively tentatively called prompt um so that's kind of that other token that you were talking about is does it get confusing or would I rather it be one? Uh, I think it makes sense to, to do it the, the way they're doing it because prime was already set to say, okay, X amounts going to this player, X amounts going to this person, X amounts going to this team. And there's already like a distribution set and they could have a vote, you know, to kind of redo all that but you're still working with the current supply versus here when you create like a new foundation you can create um you can not not start from scratch but you can create new rules that are best for that uh foundation and economy and network to to survive and to thrive all right while still rewarding the the existing like player base or investors and everything else like that because i think up to don't quote me on this but i'm pretty sure up to 40 percent of prompt is actually going to be going back to people who stake prime or who are involved in like who have parallel assets cashed or prime cashed it's awesome talking with the people throughout the day. And one of the things that, you know, I'm, I'm going to use you to <laughs> as like an example, but I love that we have people that are specializing in specific communities and that it's being appreciated more from before when it was like, oh, this person's showing their bag when it's like, no, things are advancing. We actually have some kind of a fundamental understanding and you need to almost specialize in some of these collections or you're just kind of just shooting the shit for the sake of doing it. And I just, I don't know. I, I think it's awesome that you're getting really heavily into parallel, but obviously you changed your yuga pfp and we'll want to mm -hmm. get into kind of the backstory here with your Jeremy here in a second but is there anything else that you would like to talk about parallel here before we transition oh dude there's actually so much and i i really just want to help people get introduced to the ecosystem and let them know you know okay where do you buy your first card where would you buy an avatar where would you buy a card back 
Um, you know, what what are these keys that they have? Because there's assets within the game called keys, overclock key, gravity key, galaxy key, multifold key. And it's like there is so much. Um, it can be as simple as you want to make it, or it can be as complex as you as you want to make it. Especially especially when you throw in the blockchain in there and you realize that there's not only multiple collections that exist across um, NFT marketplaces, but they also exist on different networks at the moment, which is um, the base network. And then when Colony comes out, we're also going to have assets on the Solana network. Um, but I do try my best to explain when you know people have a question for me on stream or in Discord. But I've actually created a site for people to go to. It's called primeplaybook.super.site. And this is where I am still in progress of creating, again, more guides and walkthroughs and tutorials on like how to get set up and, and answering some of those questions. But that is a compilation of any of the tools, any of the links, all the information that I've ever needed to know. And that's helpful in, in my um, you know, parallel journey. I've, I've compiled those to just exist there. So if, if you think that I know everything about parallel, which I don't, but you know, you, you want to know, you want the same information that I have, it's all right there. So I would say just bookmark that link and it'll be updated ever so often. And, uh, other than that, just, you know, tweet me, DM me, DM me on discord or, um, join in on the stream on, on my channel. Um, so I definitely wanted to get that out there. So three big things that were announced in the last few days, uh, obviously Colony, uh, Wayfinder, and then a couple of weeks ago, open beta, right? So as March started, so March 1st, we went into open beta. That means you can download the game and instantly start playing. You don't need a wallet. You don't need any NFTs, anything. You just go to parallel.life slash play, download the game, create an account, log in, start playing. They're going to throw you into rookie mode which you have to complete up to a certain point before you can compete in a ranked play, which is a really good thing because you don't want to get smoked right off the bat. But also in rookie mode, if you complete all the challenges in there, you're going to receive a buttload, right? Like hundreds of cards. They're not NFTs, they're apparitions, but those cards will allow you to put together a deck that hopefully you can be competitive with within ranked versus you know other tcgs out there that make card acquisition a little bit hard um and it's more like a timing thing or it's like a it's super grindy ranked mode like to complete it i think you have to win 25 games and so at a 50 percent win win rate 30 percent. i mean you're only talking about 50 games played um and you want to do those 50 games played anyways because you're trying to learn an entire new uh meta and uh, mechanics of the game and keywords and terminology and all that stuff like that so 50 games they make it pretty fair for you to acquire cards and, and get started guys got all the insights guys again it's at yo germy i'll bring it up on the stream a little bit later for that i just did so let's get into the nitty-gritty for anybody that doesn't know Yo, Jeremy was one of the guys here that was basically uh, a part of the original journey from Top Shot to Board Apes to where we are now. Uh, I don't know where the best way to start is. We've been reminiscing a lot here with Fibaka earlier, but I guess let's go back to Top Shot. What do you remember about the early days of Top Shot and when that first started getting traction? Oh, man. Uh, you know what? I didn't really talk ball with pretty much anybody besides like one person IRL. So I did a lot of my stuff online, like uh, reading Twitter and Reddit and all this other stuff. Um, I kind of just, you know, watched by myself. And then I think I came across something on Twitter about Top Shot. And I've never really been into trading cards at all or, or collectibles for that matter, uh, especially in terms of sports memorabilia. It's just not my thing. But um, I the one thing that actually caught my attention specifically was its integration of technology and more so blockchain technology. I thought it was pretty cool, and I started reading about that and you know how you can prove uh, the you know having this provenance so that way you can prove the origin of something and the owner of something and to actually 
have that not be ruggable, you know, to a certain extent. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I thought the fact that they were videos where it was awesome and the opening experience was pretty neat as well, especially for, you know, the time that it was. Uh, so I started looking to Top Shop for about two weeks before I bought any pack. Uh, bought my first pack and I, I think I was laying in bed and I was like, you know what? Let me just check like if anybody's talking about this. So I just searched it up on Twitter, not knowing what would pop up. And I searched Top Shot and this like curly headed, like glasses wearing Toronto fan who, you know, probably has like a, a four inch vertical was talking about Top Shot. And I was like, this, this is my guy. Like, this is the one. Uh, so I started just being involved in the community and, you know, started buying more packs with the guys, joined your discord and, you know, kind of took off from there. I remember vividly. I mean, you guys, you guys might think that he's knowledgeable and informative and he's breaking out the sites, but early days, he, you were on voice chat and the VC helping everybody out for whatever it was. And it was, you went as testifies, I feel like for yeah. uh, that back yeah, yeah. then, but obviously we've upgraded to, uh, you know, Jeremy and JVB four inch vertical. That was generous. True. We don't, I tried to jump over a tennis net once or twice actually and got caught both times and we're not going to talk about it, but the, uh, it's wild to see what it was because it was something that was kind of a casual thing, to be honest. You're like, okay, this looks kind of cool. And then it ended up being the, well, first of all, the best investment one could possibly do back in that day, even though that wasn't really the mantra of it, but at the same time, it caught viral heights and it's really, I think, you know, made us want to stay within the space to see what it could go to. So what do you give credit to for Top Shot? What do you think that it did horribly and, you know, see, <laughs> seen the heights that it went to, to the downfall, what's, what's your kind of memories of Top Shot? Well... I'm not a uh, like a super big NFT OG. I think we're considered OGs now, but like in the moment, there were so many collections that existed like across uh, Ethereum, like the the Moon Rocks, right? Ether Cats and stuff like that, or Moon Cats. Um, there was actually those art cards. I can't remember what they're card called, but there was some form of art, like but in a card format on the ethereum blockchain even before top shot you talking about curio, curio cards yeah curio cards curio cards so there was like so many that happened before top shot so i've always you know kind of thought you know top top shot did a lot but it wasn't you know it wasn't like the origin of nfts or collectibles and stuff like that but what they did was really bring it to um i'd say mainstream light and i i think i I don't even have to use quotes on that because if you look at the views that kind of maybe not the active users that Top Shot was getting, but in terms of the amount of money spent and the amount of articles, uh, the amount of clicks that they got, the amount of, you know, YouTube videos and interviews and the news outlets and, and sports media that's just like talking about Top Shot. So even if they didn't buy a single moment, it, it still introduced that idea and the concept of owning a collectible um, digitally and even further uh, on the blockchain. So I think they, de they deserve a lot of credit. Uh, I don't think that they moved fast enough. Um, you know, it's, I think it was too simple, too easy for them to just create new collections, right? Um, run it back, seeing stars, this and that, this and that. Uh, they didn't really have advanced mechanics thought out and they didn't execute those or execute on those quick enough. And then with the whole one thing that got really tiring as well was that, hey, we're in beta. Hey, we're in beta. That's why this broke. Hey, that we're in beta. That's why it's taken so long. Hey, we're in beta. And it was like, OK, well, after two years of being in beta, you'd expect something different. <laughs> uh and then obviously there's the whole Roham on a yacht thing um, that just had negative PR. And then what else? Oh, the game, the whole promise of a game, which actually in my mind, like I think could have done pretty well. But the fact that they set a timeline for themselves and they failed miserably at it and they couldn't give like a good update on that or deliver anything was um, kind of the nail in the coffin 
in terms of because they didn't necessarily shoot themselves in the foot for as much as we inflated prices, right? And that that was just kind of like a uh <laughs> it it wasn't self-inflicted. Like that was probably because of us, but in addition to that plus them not being able to to move quickly and hear user feedback and 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 do something about it. That was, you know, all together probably the death for, of Top Shot there for a while. I remember during the uh, NFT NYC event where they had Top Shot there and Roham left the event to go sit courtside at the uh, Knicks game that we went to. And I was like, what the hell is going on? But with that said, yeah. there was this big transition that we had as kind of a group within the Discord where we got into Board Ape Yacht Club. And we were rewatching the stream a little bit earlier talking about, you know, Jeremy, uh, if you, uh, you want to trade with me, depending on if we like that or you like that, let me know. And then you were like, I'm good with mine. And I was like, ah. <laughs> and it, was, it was funny reliving that. So what do you remember about the board eight mint and just kind of that transition that we collectively had from top shot to the greater uh, blockchain space? Well, yeah, we can, we started transitioning into ETH, uh, or Ethereum NFTs um, after top shot. And we did it as a group. We were learning together and I just quick tidbit is, Hey, if you're new to this space, or even if you've been here for a while and you haven't found like your group of people, guys or girls, whatever, yeah, you know, it's just like if you haven't found a group of people that you can, you know, somewhat trust, <laughs> uh, heavily trust and uh, make kind of make mistakes with and, and learn from and gain wisdom from, like I highly encourage you to do that. It's too hard to be on top of everything in this space and to know everything is in this space. Um, you always definitely want people around you who are um, smarter or more plugged in. It's just things are so much better. Uh, when you're a part of a community. So I, I highly encourage that. And there's not, I'm not, not going to say like, there's, this is the best community. I'm just saying, find the one for you and, um, you know, put it, put in the energy, put in the effort to, to make those relationships and foster those relationships as well. Um, but yeah, going back into Top Shot, get into Ethereum NFTs and then Bored Apes. Uh, I'm into the couple rugs on Ethereum. I remember I told myself I was only going to put in like 0.06 uh, uh, or buy 0.06 Ethereum and that's going to be it. Um, I did that. I like bought complete rugs, went down to zero. So I was like, okay, I'm only going to literally, this is my last 0.06, right? And then I did that. I think I flipped it a, a little bit and then Bored Apes, they were 0.08, right? Yeah, you I got think. her. Yeah, 0.08. Um, we saw the site. You introduced us to the site on Discord. I think some Top Shot guys brought it to you. Uh, we looked at it. I think the website was pretty cool. The art was, like, uh, intriguing. I don't know if we knew fully what they were going to look like. I remember the whole black and yellow question mark, like, animation. The yeah, there was only, like, four of them that they showed what they looked like. Yeah, so we didn't know what the whole collection would look like, but we, we got a pretty good feeling, and, and we were comparing it to, you know... Uh, what are the streetwear brands out there? There's Bape, and then there's another one. Supreme. With, oh, Supreme. Yeah. yeah we were, Everybody always, was like, oh, this is going to be the next Supreme. <laughs> always comparing it to that. And I don't know why. Like, from the get-go, though, it just had that vibe. Like, in you know, it was a kind of a, a private club, like a like a, a tight-knit, somewhat community. And there's only 10,000 of them and, and this and that. Uh, but the problem was, is weren't they initially, like, on a... No, there was no bonding curve at all. Not even initially. Um or, or maybe they were, I don't know. But no, yeah, I was just pointing away. Yeah, so they were halfway sold out. And then uh, at that time, it's like, well, if a collection didn't sell out in the first, you know, two days, then uh, it's pretty much going to be a dud, right? <laughs> and, but we had this vibe about them, especially you. You had a definitely, like, a good feeling for them. And I remember going to my friend's birthday party, and we were having pizza, but I was still like glued to Twitch because I was so intrigued by by the brand, by the idea. And uh, you started minting a couple and I was like, you know, what? I'm I'm at this party. I'm not at my computer. But if you give me one, like I will pay you back because I just wanted to see a reveal. It was like it was like Christmas, but in the middle of whatever that was, April. <laughs> uh, so so that was pretty cool. And I remember Gordon or somebody you know, messaging you in the Discord, well, in the server, but they had replied to you because you asked, hey, when are these things going to reveal? I want to see my ape. 
and he said we're just waiting on you know x serial number or so many of them to mint to be able to trigger the reveal function for them and then i think it was like one buy away um to do it and i think that ended up being the one that like you minted for me or something you're like whatever it was, send it it. was. <laughs> and then, so that was pretty cool too um just to see it live um yeah. Literally, we were some of the first, very first people in the entire world to see Bored Apes. Think of the millions of people who have seen them by this point. And we were, you know, probably some of the first hundred to to just witness it. And, you know, what they've become, obviously, uh, trending down, but still, like, a whole part of the journey. Like, being a part of the journey was incredibly special. I I totally agree. And JVB just mentioning regarding bonding curves were the norm before BYC, and they really led the anti bonding curve that changed the meta. And I think there was, uh, I'm gonna forget a day Zeus. Danny Ukes won one, and then he got in a, a bitch fight with the founder. Um, and it was there was Voxies, but I don't think Voxies was a bonding. Maybe Voxies was a bonding curve. But there was a few different collections back then, and that was definitely the mantra. Um, and then seeing what Apes went through, and overnight it was, if I remember correctly, Board Apes minted, and then they left it unrevealed for a few days, and like none sold, as you mentioned. But then the day of the reveal, uh, they started really picking up, and then overnight Pranksy ended up like buying a hundred of them, and then everybody, I pinged the Discord at two a.m. People were up, we were mint. And it was it, it was an absolute ordeal. And JVB yeah. saying Voxies was a bonding curve too. One one of the things that I remember for sure is I you know I got back from the birthday party. I was so tired. Uh, obviously, my eyes were tired as well. Just watching the stream like the entire night and hanging out with friends. I was like, man, I just want to go to bed. But I I did want to buy more apes. And I was like, you know what? These things aren't selling. It's not going to sell out. I'm going to buy them in the morning. And then, like you said, it just things popped off overnight. Completely sold out. Um, obviously I was bummed, but even more funny, or maybe it's not as funny, but, uh, I took my wife and her friend like shopping the next day. And then while we're in the middle of the store, I was like, you know what? It's like, don't be mad. But I, uh, I kind of bought a monkey for $200 and they're like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I bought this like image of an ape for, for 200 bucks last night. I was like, uh, you want to see it? <laughs> and then so they looked at it for the first time, and they thought it was the ugliest thing that they had ever seen. Um, so a little bit of regret, but also in that moment, I was like, okay, we're on to something. Because if you guys know, like memes and things that are just like, if they don't make sense, they make sense, right? Uh, but, but yeah, I, I vividly remember the moment when I told them that I had spent $200 on a monkey. It's always an interesting conversation, and then being like, "Hey, what do you what do you think about me spending two thousand dollars now? Because I didn't buy enough of them at two hundred and fifty. Like, why didn't you buy it at two fifty? It's like, ah, oh, you said it was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this weird back and yeah. forth. But I mean, so after Apes, like, walk me through. Obviously, like Zed Run ended up being a huge thing. I know that you got into proof a little bit. Um, I'm gonna step away from my computer for about like thirty seconds, and I'll be right back. But give me the rundown of how. Uh, uh, your transition from, you know, Board Ape Yacht Club to this big open world that we see now. What are collections you got into? What are things that uh, you're thankful that you got into? Mm, honestly, it's... Story's pretty short, I think. Um, there was, you know, it was, it was just, for me, the end goal was always about flipping. So getting into projects, getting out of projects. I I understood why things were more rare than the others but i know that it's at the end of the day it's kind of like all fabricated and something's only worth as much as somebody else is willing to pay for it and for me owning any of these pfp collections any of these gaming collections or most of them um just 99 percent of the collections that i ever got involved in i knew that i didn't want to be in long term so it was just about stacking eth because you know at the time we for sure believed that eth was going to go uh or or go for a run and you know to this day i think eth has still got a long way to go but uh it was just all about stacking that to build your eth bag <laughs> not really about being a collector so yeah eventually i did get into quite a few other projects some were rugs some were not some did very well you know where we were able to pull out um 5x 10x 50x and sometimes like 100x 
uh, in, in certain projects, and that was really, really, really good for the wallet. Uh, for proof, I did mint proof on day one. No, I tried to mint proof on day one. I did it too late. It, they kind of sold out, but I bought right after they sold out. I think I minted the proof pass for like 2.1 ETH or something like that. Or sorry, I bought it off secondary for 2.1. Held since that day. Um, got quite a big bag from that in terms of the the art and being able to get the moon birds and then sell the moon birds. Um, I was pretty fortunate enough to win a raffle. So I already had like two guaranteed mints and then plus another raffle for a moon bird. Uh, and then, yeah, just tracing the stuff back to Yuga as well in terms of the dog. We ended up hitting on the M2 serum. Um, the craziest part of my journey, probably, like the, the luckiest part, was probably hitting. For those of you who don't know, if, when you minted other deeds, they, you had a chance to also, when those other deeds came with a coda, um, which were really hyped for, for quite a while. But. I minted seven other deeds at a high school prom. I wasn't in high school at the time. I was like, quote unquote, chaperoning, right? I, I was doing tickets and, and other stuff like at the prom as a uh, supervisory adult there. But I took the time to mint seven other deeds while I was at that high school prom. And then it was it was a rough time as huge gas war. Um, but eventually the metadata started coming out and it said, you know, Coda, and it said yes, or like Coda, and then the number. And in my head, I was like, I thought these things were supposed to be rare. Like, I thought there was only supposed, you're only supposed to hit on like one out of every 10 other deeds that you minted, or maybe even 11. And so I thought certainly something had to be messed up, because on my seven other deeds, four of them had metadata that said that I, that they had a Coda on it. And so I, I eventually get back home. I hop in the Discord with the boys, and I asked them, I was like, hey, did you guys hit on CODAs? And, you know, a couple of them said yeah, uh, but a majority of them said no. And I know they they aped into it, and I so I knew something was off, like the numbers were off still. I was like, okay, well, how do you know you have a CODA? They're like, yeah, it's it's right there on the attributes. Like, it'll say CODA, yes. And I was like, dude, that is so weird. You know why? It's like seven of my other deeds say, or it's like four out of seven of my other deeds say that they have a coda. And they thought like I was trolling them. They thought I was capping. They thought I was bullshitting, like whatever. They thought there was no way this man minted four codas out of seven other deeds. And so some of them were like a bit frustrated that I would even think to say something so ridiculous. Others like laughed like, yeah, good one. Ha ha. Um, I was like, nah, guys, like I'm serious. And I forgot who checked and then somebody checked and they're like, yo, this guy's being real. Like he actually minted four codas out of seven other deeds. And then that's when everybody hated me. I don't think there was a single person in voice chat who was happy that I minted four codas out of seven other deeds. It was like pure disgust. And hatred and i don't blame them that's such an incredible story and at the time like codas were going for what like 20 plus eth yeah well i mean eventually they got up to that yeah if you held for like a little oh right there were like 14 15 for yeah. on opening i think yeah 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 that's that's do you hold any of them still no <laughs> yeah no no <laughs> yeah i think i sold two uh two at 20 around 2022 20, and then the other two kind of on the way down so maybe like five and two the next the next two well harry is saying man's not a collector the vine's laughing at the story i'm totally said lol and trucon is saying i was happy nah trucon well no what well, okay trucon may have been but you know it was not because i minted four out of seven it was because this man minted like an insane other deed a chaos other deed yo true no shot that's great. yeah and great. that thing was selling for like 70 plus ETH. like it was it was disgusting wild. And yeah. it's weird that like for a collection that was out of a hundred thousand 
after everybody just got completely rinsed on gas, it was going for the prices that were. And I mean, I guess the only rationale for that is there was a bunch of people that weren't able to mint. And so they FOMO'd on secondary because like it doesn't really make sense for a hundred thousand collection. The price that those came out at. Right, I mean, I'm talking about like the whole collection. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I mean, that had to be one of the biggest like instant marking caps of any NFT collection ever in terms of the time it took to get there, right? Which is pretty much instantly right after mint as uh, that number was astronomical. <laughs> that was the uh, day Trucon stopped responding to my text. I'm totally Trucon was like, I'm too rich for this guy. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. Yeah. No, Trucon was living good. He was living high. Um, one other story, just by the way, on the, on the journey that I remember is when mutants came out and we minted, mm. um, one person in our discord server, he just minted because obviously he knew about board apes, but he knew that we were sending it on mutants and he just, he had the liquid ETH. He wanted to be a part of it. I think he minted only one and he ended up minting a mega mutant and he had no idea what it was. We were all sharing our mutants, what they look like. And then he comes in and he posts a picture of his and I forgot the question he asked. He's like, what does this mean? Or like, why does it look different? Or like, why, are, you know, is there anything special about this one? I think he asked, right? Is there anything special about it? And people like the, the amount of replies in our server was like, bro, bro, bro. Oh my God. Like, yo, do you realize what you have? Like, oh, it's a mega. And he just, he was shook. Like he didn't even know what that meant. And so we had to literally break it down for him. Like, do not floor it. Do not sell it just yet. Like, do not just sell to anybody. Like, lock down your stuff because that thing is worth a lot. And he didn't even know it. It's cool that uh, they integrated that within the mutant uh, mint, though. I remember thinking, like, back to the original roadmap that they, you know, we're going to pay our mom back. We're going to have the radio station, which again is always a banger to listen to. And then we're going to ape with our friends. And I, what was your take on the way that they like integrated that with the serums? And then they had the mint beyond it. And then they did have those, it was eight or 10 megas. Uh, at the time it was kind of innovative, right? Like it was still pretty, not elementary. Like it was still pretty simple though. Right. It's still just a, a 2d JPEG. Um, you know, a Photoshop layer, like a, a ERC-721 token that points to, you know, some image off-chain or not on-chain, but like it's not completely on-chain data. It was probably pinata or something like that, uh, IPFS. Um, but, you know, the, the smart contract methods and mechanics it takes to, to be able to do that was, uh, I don't even know if it was truly novel at the time but it definitely felt like it and it didn't matter because they're the biggest ones doing it right so it felt like they're the only ones who did it uh it was pretty cool um i remember gutter cats um i don't know who came out first like in terms of the, the whole mutant thing but um it didn't like i said it didn't really matter because yuga was the one doing it so uh they kind of get all the credit anyways right it's like when apple does something and it seems novel because Apple are the ones who are doing it. Um, and they just, they just make a huge splash. But yeah, it, it's, it's cool. Uh, the whole serums and the, you know, random distribution, you know, this, you, you took a role on M1 or M2 serum. Um, when you, when you bought mutants, you didn't know if you're getting a mega or not. Uh, you know, when you, when your ape takes the serum, there were still, no, there wasn't random. Like, you'd get M2 traits of the ape that you got already. That was pretty cool. Um, people building full sets from the M1 and the M2. Uh, yeah, all, all that stuff was was really cool at the time. And I remember just being glued, or all of us being glued to our computer and, and watching it go down, just making history. Uh, I remember, <laughs> oh, funny story about the serum is we were during the distribution because, you know, they said, okay, serums are being sent out now. I was glued, like my eyes were watching my wallet, hard refreshing every five seconds on OpenSea, watching the smart contract, you know, to see what, when my address was, uh, or when they sent one to my, to my address. And we got down to, you know, the last few going out. And I was like, oh, all the M1s are sent out, bro. Like that means that 
definitely means like I got an M2, like 100% I'm hitting on an M2. And then something in that moment, like didn't happen the last two hours. Something in that moment told me, you are an idiot. You have been watching the wrong wallet address this whole time. Because where they were sending the serum was not where I was watching. They were sending it to another one of my wallets. So then after being like, you know, I I was elated that I was going to get an M2 100%. And then I got knocked back down to earth because I realized I was watching the wrong wallet the whole time. So it was probably already sent there. So I go and check that account. I refresh. I saw that there was a serum sent. And thankfully, it was an M2. <laughs> So, so it was just this roller coaster of emotions where I watched for two hours for no reason, got to a high, got sent back down to zero, and then I went back up again because I had already gotten an M2 cent like an hour ago. That's what I call tough, but also uh, good come up there, Mr. Yo Jeremy. Now, in chat, Wicked's bringing up the, I remember Gokina figuring out how to mint from contract. When you think of the mints that we got into back in the day, and more specifically ones that were a gas war, it's funny because now I feel like nobody wants to mint almost anything. But we had the Vogu gas wars. We had other side gas wars. We had Stoner Cats gas wars. I'm curious if anybody in chat, if you guys remember any of the ones from the early days. I remember it was you or Q Dog that was like explaining to me how to mint from contract for uh, the Vogu, and then I ended up not getting it, and then me and him like traded for it or something after yeah. the fact. But like, it's wild that we might never experience what the craziness was. I know it's a once in a lifetime, like experience, not necessarily in a good way, but like, it's pretty surreal to think about. Yeah, no, nah, it's definitely something, um, you know, I'll tell my avatars about one day. <laughs> um, no, but Gokina, so Gokina is obviously a legend in the server, and he does get credit for quite a lot of stuff, including a, a bunch of Top Shot things. I don't think we can give him credit for um, <laughs> learning how to mint from contract. I think he was just the loudest one because there was Gokina had about like 10 words in his vocabulary, and minting from contract were three of them. Uh, <laughs> I think, like, anytime he opened his mouth, his mouth and voice chat, it was meant from contract or something like that, or gas fees, like upping gas and all this stuff. Uh, I definitely think he brought it to the masses because, again, he, or in terms of the server, because he was the most vocal about it. <laughs> so, yeah, that dude's definitely a legend. Uh, I know uh, hopefully he's uh, off to college pretty soon this year and whatnot. Um, so, shout out to him and, and good luck, Gokina. It's pretty surreal, to be honest, like just the, yeah. the fact that we know somebody that was younger that was doing that. And there was a lot of other people that were younger in the space and, you know, us getting off college, whatever, real, real world. And then see now everybody's doing this from completely different points of their life. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool. And but honestly, I mean, where he really deserves credit, though, is just being that young. Did, do you remember what you were doing when you were 15? <laughs> no, I not, not doing, doing that. I 15, yeah. And I was not doing that. So, you know, as much as much heat as he gets, um, I mean, it, it takes somebody who's definitely, like, incredibly uh, brave and adventurous and uh, courageous to kind of just be in that world. And, you know, surround yourself with the most part. I know there's girls in here, but just like 30 plus year old guys uh, and like, you know, sharing kind of your identity and your personality and trying to wrap your head around the blockchain and having to be in cu custody of your on your own wallet like that. That is a lot to deal with. So, uh, yeah, again, just kudos to Gokina for kind of what he's accomplished in the space. 100%. So as we're wrapping up here, what I've been doing with a couple guests is I have some points. Well, I'll just call them statements for lack of a better term. Uh, and I'll let you hear what they are. Uh, and you're just going to give me a response, whether it's 60 seconds, you know, three minutes, five minutes, however you want to respond. Uh, and the first one being Yuga acquires Moonbirds. And he's gone. All right, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, you go acquires Moonbirds. Um, I think it's an F. Like I, I'll probably give it a zero. Um, if I had to grade it, I think it's just like a tone deaf move. Um, it is. It's like a play that they can't necessarily lose on, like mathematically or like financially, because you know it was, it, a lot of it was in equity or whatever. Uh, but. They, I do feel like after that moment, they lost a lot of community faith and trust because we were screaming when I say we just apes in general, like we're screaming for, for, for something more like, let's go back to the golden days. Let's get, you know, some, some hyped mints, like fuck it. It's Saturday, um, type of, type of vibes going. And that had been going on for at least a couple months. And then after dead silence, from everybody out of nowhere they tell they tell us yeah we just bought a dead project from one of the most hated founders ever in kevin rose so uh well no i was dead i was still bullish on on moonbirds even before i mean way before you could bought them but there was a time when i definitely turned on moonbirds themselves after i saw what like Cairo and the team were doing as well but hey i i sold a moonbird for on day one for nine ETH. I sold another one for 22 ETH. And then I sold another one for like four or five ETH. So I definitely made my, my bags like in, in moonbirds. But uh, yeah, they, they, they had the best party or not the best. They had some of the best parties in NFT NYC for sure as well. And I know that's not like a, a success metric of an NFT project, but just another shout out to Moonbirds. They weren't like a complete fail or proof wasn't a complete fail. They did things incredibly well in the beginning. They just fell short of what they set out to do. Um, like a lot of these projects. The NFT market completely decimated with the crypto market pump. Uh, necessary, I guess needed. Um, you know, NFTs are died. Um, shout out manga. <laughs> <laughs> died in nfts are died in. but yeah as you know crypto pumps and especially with some stuff that was going on in the in the regulatory world um i think people just see the the upside of the actual tokens uh and alt tokens included versus the actual nfts like nft craze is kind of dead kind of over for the for the meantime uh they will have their their time again but also it's like think about uh think about somebody getting in for the moment and them having to learn the entire history of apes of gutter cats of you know uh whatever punks or something it's like there is so much that goes into it and where is that stuff held pretty much on x and on and on discord and who's going to go through the entire history book of a project to really feel um that connection with that project they weren't there on day one so are these collect you know they're always these og collections are always going to have this intrinsic value for for players that existed at that time but when you introduce new customers new people who are being introduced to the blockchain it's probably more valuable for them to get into new projects that are created in that moment versus paying an exorbitant amount for those that already happened in the past. The common trend of projects that have a successful in quotes collection on another chain now launching an ordinals collection. I have no idea. <laughs> I, um, to be honest, even if we're talking about NFTs, I have had zero sight, zero vision on any current NFT project that's going on right now or like new other than what Parallel is doing, to be honest with you. Nope, that's that's fair. Uh, so next one, Meme Coin Mania. Meme Coin Mania. Yo, shout out Harry Swan, big influence. <laughs> uh, and shout out JVB. I don't know. I don't know if he wants me to like put all his business out there on stream, but like shout out JVB for what he's done in the last day. Uh, also shout out Kaz and Toasty. So those are the four big players. I do want to shout out Snow. Snow, I don't want to put his name down, but he's been having a little, little rough time. So prayers up for my boy Snow. Um, he's been in the game a while, but I want to 
have a special shout out for Snow because he's actually been the one that's helped me the most, like in the in the meme coin game in terms of that whole education and and learning and getting set up. Uh, so Snow has been the most helpful, although karma has not come his way quite yet in terms of the the success part. Um, but but yeah, I I think it's awesome. Like it's there's going to be trends and cycles and why not like you in the current world there's you know with with tiktok and uh all these viral video trends and 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 memes like going on i think meme coins make perfect sense kind of in this economy um and they truly are a get rich quick scheme but for a handful of people uh not for the masses so uh yeah why not uh just be careful out there and uh only gamble what you can afford to lose the Bitcoin ETFs and potential future ones to come impact on the broader markets. Uh, you said spot ETFs and impact on uh, the like markets. the Bitcoin ETF, how that's happened so yeah, far. Yeah. How do you think the impact going forward for these ETFs is going to be on the market? Uh, I mean, in the short term, midterm, like, well, no, nah, overall, just, yeah, just overall trend. Like, I think it's, a positive impact in like in for for future growth as well just all that industrial those like industrial size funds um of people just being able to invest but in a safe manner um and it's not just regular people that we're talking about right we're talking about huge investors and uh groups of investors coming together to 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 be involved in crypto um, and get involved in this digital currency that probably will run day or one day run <laughs> the global economy. Um, so I think it makes sense. And I think they're incredibly bullish on it. So if they're bullish on it, uh, that's only going to reflect in the price of, you know, in, in, in the markets. And I think that's what we've seen, you know, what, when, when was that stuff changed? Like in February, early February, and we've seen a pretty big bull, bull run since then. Um, I don't think it's going to be one-to-one tied to it, but in general, uh, I, I think it's a good thing for the market, and we'll see hopefully some some good things come from the, the Ethereum um, ETFs as well. Final one, the trend of many collections making a Fortnite experience. <laughs> uh it's cool. It it it's cool, but it's like does that vibe with their current market, right? Their current target market. Uh if it you know, if there it's it's a hundred player base, right? A hundred person player base, uh, or if it's not immersive enough, or if it they're not organically sharing that on social, then was it worth it? So like if it makes sense for that specific project or brand to to do that then I, I think it's amazing. It's a go- cool way to get exposure to, um, you know, externally as well. Uh, there There's just a huge amount of people on Fortnite, you know, within the ages of uh, probably, what, 13 to, <laughs> like, 35. So why not? Uh, I, th- I think that's cool. But I do hope that they are pushing... Uh, the limits, right? Like pushing the boundaries of what can be done on there. Uh, Not like a copy paste build. So final thing here, as we're wrapping up again, guys, I'm going to throw your, uh, your handle here. It's at yo Jeremy. But if you're going to do kind of one last synopsis about kind of who you are, why people should pay attention, obviously you do streams and you're super into parallel and maybe give a kind of quick plug for people that aren't paying attention to parallel of why they should. Uh, man. Yeah. So my name is Jeremy. I go by Yo Jeremy stream on Yo Jeremy, all my socials, Instagram, Twitter, Yo Jeremy, which was famously coined, famously coined by Schiller himself. If you didn't know, again, back in that time in Top Shot and Ethereum, whenever this man needed some, some tips, some help, <laughs> or wanted to shout me out, he'd always, or when I joined the call, he'd always be like, Yo, Jeremy. and so that's where it came from. That's, that's how it kind of stuck. But yeah, in terms of parallel, check out primeplaybook.super.site um, to learn the very basics and fundamentals of parallel. At the very least, I would say to 
get yourself some prime, you know, whatever you can afford. Like I know you guys, if you're listening to this stream, you probably have, you know, a little bit of your, your bag that you can afford to expose to prime. Uh, I'm not going to say go buy right this second, but buy when you see that there is an opportunity to, to get in, you know, in the short term and uh, let, let that be your entrance into the ecosystem and then go from there. Just, just don't miss the ride up. This guy told me to buy a parallel avatar at like 0.08 and I faded and uh, that didn't, that didn't, that didn't necessarily age well, but yo, Jeremy, appreciate you coming on here. We'll do it again sometime soon. Absolutely. Oh, See you, man. Right. Face, face. Hell yeah. All right. There's yo, Jeremy.